It's December 20th, 2021. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'm working on a boat project again. Now, I'm at home, obviously, but that's because the project is here at home. About a month ago, I removed this Wilcox Crittenden No. 5 bronze port light from my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga. Now, why did I remove it? Because last summer I over tightened it and the glass cracked right across here. So about a month ago after I removed it, I uh, took the broken glass out of it uh, using the brute force method. In other words, I laid this on top in on top of a piece of plywood and draped a towel over it and whacked it with a hammer and broke the gl remaining glass out of it. So that left me with needing to put new glass in. And today, this arrived. This is a sheet of 3 8 inch thick Lexan, which is what I'm going to use to replace the glass that was in the port light. So why did I pick Lexan? Well, it's a little bit involved, but basically what it comes down to is by tightening this up a little bit uh, in order to stop it from leaking between the port light and the gasket, which is an 86 year old black rubber gasket, which has gotten a little hard. It doesn't seal that well unless it's really tight. Apparently the port warped a little and the glass, being very brittle, cracked. And so I know that this thing has a little bit of warp in it, and if I have to tighten it up tight again, if I replace it with new glass, probably just crack again, and uh, that will be a problem. So I decided to replace it with uh, Lexan, or polycarbonate, if you want to go with the generic term for it, uh, because polycarbonate is very, very tough. You can twist it, you can whack it with a hammer, it will not break. It might deform a little, might bend a little. And in fact, it will, if you put pressure on it, conform to any twist that's in this port light. So that's why I decided to go with Lexan. Yes, it scratches a little bit more easily, Yes, it's susceptible to receiving UV damage over time. However, the piece of Lexan that I bought has a UV resistant coating on it, so it should uh, last quite a while. And these port lights, because of where they're located, are not something that we wipe off very much to clean them. So uh, hopefully uh, when I get the Lexan in, uh, the port light can be reinstalled and will last many years. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is install the piece of Lexan in here. So let's go over and take a look at this port light in a little more detail. Well, here's the port light lying on my table down here in my workroom. And let's open it up. Here is the old gasket, which I'm going to remove and replace with uh, silicone rubber, which will be much more flexible. And here is the body of the port light. Now, if I tilt this up a little, you can probably see that there's a groove right here. That groove is located at the back of the glass. And this split ring was in that groove. And after only 86 years, there was a good deal of corrosion on the ring. And it was, I couldn't just grab a hold of it and pull it up and get it out. So uh, what I ended up doing was drilling a hole in it right next to the frame of the port right here, like this right next to the frame of the port. And here's the hole. Drill goes right in there. And then I put the drill bit in, used a little bit of wedging with trying, by taking screwdrivers and hammering them in between the body of the port light and the drill bit. 
and then gradually prying the ring out of the groove. And it took about 30 minutes of banging and twisting and driving progressively big, thicker screwdrivers as wedges, you can see that's wedge shaped, into the groove before the end of it came out of the groove. Once I got the end out, I was able to, using other screwdrivers, to gradually work my way around and pull this ring out of the groove. And this is the retaining ring for the glass. And uh, once it was out, it was completely covered with corrosion, so I wire brushed it to clean it up. This is a bronze ring. I also wire brushed the inside of the uh, port light and the mating surface for the glass against the body of the port light and then took a little bit of fine sandpaper and cleaned out the groove so that now we can fit the ring back in with a little bit of persuading. It will go in there and uh, I think I want to go this way actually. Yeah, there we go. It'll go in there and can be pressed in and will act as a retainer for the new glass or Lexan. So at this point, now that I've done all this prep work and gotten this taken apart, gotten it all cleaned up, the next step is to cut the Lexan so that it will fit in here. Now I've measured this and this is just a hint under five and a half inches. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut the Lexan to fit. So what I'm gonna do to do that is turn this upside down like that and we'll put the Lexan under it. And I'm gonna trace around the inside with a pen onto the uh, plastic film that is covering the surface of the Lexan. So let's do that. So here is the Lexan. I've got enough that if I goof it up, I have four tries. <laughs> So we'll put this on, get it right over to the edge of there, right over to the edge of there. Now let's trace this inner ring onto the Lexan, make sure I'm okay there. This has got a plastic fill on it, so I'm trying to use a pen that will uh, right on the plastic film. Okay, so although you probably can't see it very well, there is the outline of the inside of the port light visible on that film. So what I'm going to do now is take this out into my outside shop where my bandsaw is and I'm going to cut a circle of Lexan out of this Lexan sheet. Now this is 3 8 inch thick Lexan. So, uh, but the, and I figured the bandsaw with a very narrow blade should be ideal for cutting this uh, circle out of it. So time to go out and get that done. I'm not going to take you with me for that because my outside shop is a real mess and uh, it's also cold out there, about 24 degrees. So uh, it's gonna be kind of, I don't wanna take any extra time out there setting up cameras or anything uh, to make this cut. So once I get this cut, I'll see if it fits. If it's a little tight, I will take a sander and sand around the outside of the uh, circle until it fits really well, okay? Time to go cut some Lexan. Well, I've been out to the shop and I've cut this guy off and fits. Took about 40 minutes of sanding to get it to fit because I got the bandsaw cut slightly irregular and it just took forever to get it to fit. So the next step is to uh, 
turn it over, hold it against there flush, and uh, trim off the coating around the edge so it has a good bonding surface. So I'm just going to go around the edge here with the X-Acto. And then I can peel off that coating. And if I get a little scratch in the Lexan, it won't hurt it. Won't be visible. There we go. Now yeah, we can peel off this little bit of coating here. See, and that gives me a bonding surface. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side so that I have a good surface for the ring here to bear on. And I've got a mark on here that goes toward the hinge. And we'll set it there. Because this uh, ring, when it's seated, is the same diameter as here. So I'll just cut around there. That should do it. Now this is going to be the inside. So we'll take this off, this paper. So I've got a little raised edge around the outside from all the cutting and sanding. So I'm going to go and sand that off. I'm going to do it outside because I don't want lex sand dust inside. And I'm also going to take some fine sandpaper and go over this exposed surface to get uh, a little bit better bonding surface. All right, I'm just going to put a bead of caulk in here. I'm going with a fairly abundant bead, like this. There we go. Looks pretty good. Just spread it a little bit more here and there. I'm just going to take a look at that, see how it looks. Wipe off any excess here. <laughs> yeah, this stuff is messy. <laughs> okay. And at this point, we're going to take the Lexan and drop it in. All right, that's in. I'm going to put a piece of uh, a weight on here, probably in the form of a can of paint will be enough. And that's going to provide, yeah, a nice bond all the way around. And when I go to put the ring in, I'll put a little bit more right in here. I got a little bit used up there. Let's see if we can get that off. Okay. So the trick now is just to wait until that cures. I'm going to move it into a different room and let it cure. I had to cut off, I cut the tapered ends off, so it's going to be an actual split ring. 
and uh, it is going to provide some backing for the glass. Okay, at this point, I am ready to put the split ring in, and it is going to fit in here with just a little bit of caulking compound around the edges. So what I'm going to do is just put a tiny bit of caulk in here. to seal the edge of the Lexan. And this will also sort of lubricate as well as lock the split ring into place. So, so we're going to slide that in and pull it out. Again, this is the top of the port, so it's unlikely to leak up there. So I'm going to put the split up there, about there. It just slides right in. And we'll fit it in here. And there we go. That's easy. You just went right in. Let me just make sure it's in all the way around. There we go. Okay, so this is going to hold the glass in. And I'm just pushing it in. take the uh, paper towel and wipe off any excess caulk. And we'll have it. And this time I was sensible and put my gloves on. And here we are. And there is a little bit of caulk in the gap. And to get this out in the future, what we're going to do, what we'll have to do is probably drill another hole in it on this side, then use a regular split ring tool to pull it out, which should work pretty well. Now the caulk that's going in here is getting on the plastic cover or over the Lexan. And that will all disappear when I remove those protective plastic sheets. So at this point, I let the uh, caulk cure on the main part for several hours and it uh, is reasonably cured. So I think the glass is installed. And tomorrow, after this uh, caulk cure has had overnight to cure, I will pull this off and this project, pull off the protected plastic, and this project will be done. Pretty straightforward. Although I could actually probably get away with pulling that protected plastic off now. Let's see what we can do. If we can get in here and pry that up in one spot. Just get the edge up and try over here. I have to get the edge up as long as I don't fool with this. I 
that's finished. Now let's go and do the other side. getting excess partially cured caulk off here. Pull that off. A little bit more up here. And there, quite far enough. There we have a fully repaired porthole. Everything is done and you can see that Lexan is nice and transparent and it's well sealed and that should be beautiful. The only thing I have left to do that I'm probably going to do in the future is replace this gasket with uh, silicone rubber. So I'm going to have to uh, dig that out of there and put my new and build a new gasket with the caulking compound. I'll probably do that tomorrow after this is cured out. So there we go. A completely finished port. Well, I'll just say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please give me a thumbs up, and if you're interested in the kind of content that I provide and find it uh, worthwhile, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. Thanks for watching.